Hi, Dada. Are you going to ask me shitty questions again? Is that why you're smiling? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Okay, this is my question. Why aren't you more outdoorsy? As in, why don't you like long walks and long jogs or fresh air in general? Because too much construction and it triggers my allergies. Can you describe your allergies? Sneezing, violent sneezing, ultraviolet sneezing. It feels my lungs are going to come out. And if your lungs did come out, what would doctors find inside? Dog hair, cat hair, pollen, dust. Lot of construction going on, so cement, 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 everywhere cement. Okay, that's it. Shall we get back to work? Bye. Fresh air. Is it a mere idea, a mere concept these days? Because whenever I step out, it feels like my lungs get ready for an epic battle. What should they let in, and what should they keep out? There's smoke from garbage being burnt. dark fumes from the exhausts of cars buses and autos there's dust from roads being dug up and buildings being constructed there's pollen there's smoke from tandoors and stoves on footpaths and fumigation to chase mosquitoes away this isn't about one or two cities in india it's across our country noida mein aqi level jo hai wo 353 pahunch chuka hai delhi of course is in various lists topping the world in air pollution While the air quality in one of the world's most polluted cities has plunged to over its worst. delhi punjab haryana prabhat pala and over again next around uh, this time of year smog in delhi usually becomes a big problem but there are also several other towns and cities that regularly see bad air quality like katihar in bihar aaj delhi se zyada pradushit ho gayi gwalior and mp aqi level 307 tha gurgaon in haryana 450 ke paar chala gaya hai chennai chennai il irav muluvadum mumbai 305 bangalore 231 and kolkata teen shor paar ho chole gaye maximum days e in fact over the last few years the number of good air days in at least the big cities have lasted barely a few months each year in mumbai it's been about 4 to 5 months of good air In Delhi you'll be lucky if you get even one entire month. Imagine this in the context of water. You get to drink clean water only for 165 days in a year. And for the remaining 200 days you have to drink water that's polluted. Would you accept that? Probably not. But with air we are a bit lax. Even though the rising toxicity of our air is literally killing millions of us every year. So imagine this in a hypothetical future The air keeps getting toxic, but we take a decision. We decide to enclose our neighborhoods and cities within giant domes with clean air inside. Imagine an ad like this. <coughs> Hello, Daddy. Are why are you coughing again? You know why? No, <coughs> my throat always feels like sandpaper when the air is this grey and smoky. It's, it's, it's sand paper. I've told you so many times, beta. Just come stay with us during these months, no? In Gurgaon? Ha, to Gurgaon. I'm in Gurgaon. I'm actually talking about Rauna. We moved into the dome, yeah. The dome? What is that? It's the dome. You know, where no matter what the month, summer or winter, the air is always clean and crisp. Remember, we had that marathon during Diwali here in our dome because the air is always clean and crisp. Yes. Aaja, beta. Your city is getting really bad. We're worried about your health. It's all work from home anyway. Come here and work in good weather, good air inside the dome. Welcome to La Dome in Gurga. A hundred square kilometer luxurious layout located entirely inside a clean air dome, complete with apartments, a school, playgrounds, parks, and offices. All within a tightly controlled air dome that maintains the best quality filtered alpine air. Taking deep breaths as you saunter through our forest areas, meditate in our world-class parks, and enjoy the open-air restaurants by pristine lakes. Your children can now play outside without the fear of a lung disease or an asthmatic attack. Choose Lado and keep your loved ones safe from bad air. Call us to make an appointment and breathe free today. Lado. Welcome to Imagined Tomorrow. This is the show where we imagine hypothetical futures for India. 
futures that could become a reality, then science and tech try to solve problems within our uniquely Indian context. What would these scenarios look like? And should we even make them happen? That's what we'll talk about. I'm your host, Shreya. This episode, we are taking on a thought experiment, where more and more of us start living inside domes that keep us safe from toxic air. Perhaps it's a dome built around our individual houses or buildings. Maybe it's around neighborhoods or even entire cities. And we'll try and answer these questions. What would a clean air dome look like? Where would we build them if we could? And who gets to live inside these domes? And who gets left out? Welcome back. Let's start with why we might even entertain the idea of a clean air dome. Yeah, I think there are two things that have happened together or around the same time in the last two, three decades. That's Dr. Rohit Meghi, an associate professor of urban studies at the Ambedkar University in Delhi. One is that air has gotten worse since the 80s and 90s and people increasingly have better knowledge about it. And this is thanks to media campaigns, TV discussions, school curriculums taking air pollution more seriously and easy access to all those AQI or air quality index numbers that flash red, orange, but rarely green. So air is something that is talked about far more. It is understood as a real uh, health consequence, which perhaps wasn't the case so much earlier. The second thing that's happened, he says, is that increasingly city residents have learned that it is possible to create bubbles of spaces that are better and safer than the rest of the city. For instance, many of us have swapped open-air chaotic markets on busy streets for enclosed air-conditioned shopping malls. On streets, there's the maramari of crowds, the chaos of haphazardly parked vehicles, there's heat, dust, smoke from the exhausts of buses and bikes. But inside the bubble of a shopping mall, there's a controlled, cool environment. Or consider gated colonies. Again. It's a bubble that promises better security and facilities than the more open neighbourhoods. RO systems, if you distrust the water supply, power backups and private schools, etc. So all of these together mean that this idea that you can somehow get off the grid and create your own systems, this is now prevalent. This, uh, in fact, is common across our cities. Let's recap Dr. Rohit's points. One, we've realised that the rapid growth of our cities has created an unhealthy environment for us. Two, we've also learned that we can simply create our own bubbles or systems with the kind of environment and facilities we want. So when you put the two things together, then it is not surprising that things like private domes make an entry. They are sort of the new RO for today's uh, consumers. And just like many of us drink Aru water and walk in and out of shopping malls these days without a second thought, perhaps there will be a time in the future when we will casually slip in and out of livable clean air domes. If I had to imagine such a dome, I would take a map of any Indian city, Mumbai or Bangalore maybe, and plonk half a coconut shell on it. Let's assume that the shell is transparent. Outside the limits of the coconut hemisphere, air would be polluted, dark and smoggy. Inside, the air would be crisp and clean. Outside, the city would be hidden in a haze. Inside, you would be able to clearly see all the buildings, trees, roads, parks, flyovers and the same traffic jams. Outside is where all the bad things happen. Inside is where people live undisturbed. This concept of a domed city isn't new at all. These have been imagined on Earth, on moons and other planets in several science fiction books and movies. War. The idea is that the outside is so inhospitable. War never changes. That people have to live inside carefully constructed and controlled bubbles where the environment is perfect. Which is why this idea has also found its way to real life. For example, in the 1960s, American architect Buckminster Fuller wanted to build a massive three-kilometer-wide dome covering the busy maze of Manhattan in New York. Outside could be anything, but inside, Fuller imagined that the air would be cleaner, temperature would be controlled, not too hot, not too cold, and there would be good weather all year round. 
In 1971, a bunch of architects wanted to build a domed city in the Arctic. They imagined that it would be a 2 km wide dome that would cover a city with at least 40,000 residents living in a tightly controlled environment undisturbed by the outside cold. In 2017, there was a similar plan for Dubai. An architect wanted to build sealed domes on Dubai's deserts where the inside would be safe from the heat and the dust of the outside. Now, let's come back to India. In the early 2010s, Rajat Sodhi, an architect in Delhi, was researching ways to build large but lightweight structures. This was also a time he was feeling increasingly frustrated by the rising air pollution in Delhi. So, he came up with an idea called the Bubbles project, a large lightweight dome or bubble that would have clean air inside. The structure that I've designed, it's made with steel cables and something called ETFE. ETFE is an extremely light and strong plastic material that was first made for the aerospace industry. So Rajat's idea was to create the main body of the dome using ETFE with steel cables to hold it down. The next question then is how would the inside of the dome have clean air? And for Rajat, the answer was trees. You know, the idea of bubbles kind of came to me where I was thinking that, you know, what if we could take some of our green areas and cover them with a large span structure, then we can take the clean air that these trees are producing and stop it from mixing with the bad air of the city. So Rajat believes that trees by themselves can keep the air inside a dome clean, while the physical structure of the dome would keep the toxic air from the outside from coming in. This way, he says, people can go to parks for walks and do yoga without having to worry about their lungs getting damaged. In a way, like, you know, for example, if you were to harness solar power, you would look for the sunniest spot, right? <laughs> so if you, if you want to harness clean air, then you've got to look for the greenest spot. Rajat's idea hasn't been implemented yet. So we don't know how it might have played out. But since we talked about the ability of trees to clean up air, I decided to explore this a bit more. And this is what I found. Trees are great at many things, like removing a lot of carbon dioxide. Some species can also filter out atmospheric pollutants like sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide. And some can even help remove particulate matter, the tiny particles that are especially bad for our health. But not all plant species are the same. Some are better at filtering pollutants than others. Some species actually don't do well with pollution around. Some even release volatile organic compounds themselves, which can mix with other pollutants and create harmful substances like ozone. So, whether a green space inside a dome can truly clean the air by itself would depend on a whole lot of things. Like, what kinds of trees, shrubs and grasses are there? How are they planted? What is the level of pollution in the area to begin with? What kinds of different pollutants will the trees have to clean? And answers to these questions will need more research than we have today. But maybe what we can say is that given the level of pollution outside, plants might have a lot of trouble cleaning up the air by themselves. Dr. Rohit actually had an interesting anecdote to share. In Delhi, actually in one place uh, called Nehru Place, um, there is an office called Paharpur Business Center, which markets itself as a green space and which has, as they say, these are not my words, that they have alpine air. One of Dr. Rohit's colleagues visited the office and met the owner during the course of their research. Uh, and uh, it's interesting that they have industry-grade air purifiers. At one level, they do what they are promising. That is, they do clean up the air and purify it. And they have the machinery installed capable of doing that. So in a sense, that if you do want to go to an office space where there is clean air, then you can consider that center. But at the same time, in a sort of performative manner, they also have these thousands of plants indoors. So it gives the impression that the plants are actually cleaning the air. And they might be doing that a little bit, but for the most part, it's the air purifiers. So far, we've mostly talked about clean air domes as a concept. But there is one quote-unquote clean air dome in Delhi. More on that after a quick break. A 
So I'm Jaydhar Gupta. I'm a clean air activist and entrepreneur. Jay lives in Delhi, and getting access to clean air has sort of become his life's mission. My lungs got pretty severely damaged. I acquired bronchial asthma in 2013, and I was told uh, I am going to have to live with this for the rest of my life. And it was a few months later that I found out that this was uh, due to air pollution. It's not just his life that he's worried about. If you're a parent here, yeah, you're constantly living in guilt. Uh, you know, if my child is indoors and not playing outdoors, I'm unhappy. If they're, they're playing outdoors, I'm unhappy because they're breathing, you know, toxic air and they have elevated heart rates in toxic air, which is not recommended. Uh, there's guilt all around. But in 2021, Jay got an opportunity to change things. RD School in Delhi's New Friends Colony approached him. They wanted him to come up with a solution so that the school has good air quality all year round. Fortunately, it had you know a structure all around and kind of an open courtyard. Picture this: a bunch of buildings surround a courtyard that's open to the atmosphere. So Jay sealed off all the external windows of the school and put a roof on the open courtyard. That way, the school was now a giant enclosed box with nothing exposed to the outside air. I'm going to call it a dome because it's like an enclosed big box, right? On the courtyard's new roof, Jay placed two big air units that filter the outside toxic air and pump in large volumes of the now clean air into the school. So it creates a positive pressure on the in the entire dome. Positive pressure. Imagine the tire of a bicycle. You need to pump in enough air inside it so it can withstand outside forces like your weight sitting down on it. The same principle works in the dome. Just like a tire, the air pressure inside a dome, in this case the enclosed school, needs to be slightly higher than the pressure of the air outside. This pressure difference is really really small by the way, but it's important so that the outside polluted air does not leak back inside, which is why Jay sealed off all the windows and the courtyard's roof. And this dome effect he created for the school has worked like magic he says. Not only is the PM 2.5 90% less than what it is outside so we mitigated you know the air pollution risk PM 2.5 or particulate matter less than 2.5 micrometers are particles that are about 30 times smaller than the width of your hair they come from the exhausts of cars and buses when fuel is burnt when wood coal or garbage is burnt they come from construction dust when you smoke cigarettes or cook food these fine particles are particularly bad for us because they can travel deep inside our lungs and damage them over time uh but also you know every 20 minutes we are moving the entire volume of air in the school out of the dome which means there's fresh clean air coming into the school every 20 minutes and you know even when we had the first interaction when we invited the parents and some doctors and what not i mean they couldn't believe how simple the solution was and how cost effective it was and and the results we were achieving out of it so you know i think everybody just felt really warm and fuzzy that hey uh, we can move ahead from this and i actually gave the idea to the school that you know that school can now be a shelter even if in, in case there was a war a biological war or chemical war that school can actually become a shelter you know for that not only those kids but their parents and you know a larger community uh, you know that's what we created i mean you know by doming that school So that is India's first domed school, domed specifically for the purpose of clean air. Of course, it's more of a boxed school and not the hemispherical structure you'd imagine when I say the word dome, but the concept is similar. In fact, across architectural designs, domes work on this same principle that a part of the outside gets enclosed and the structure enclosing it is airtight and pressurized. Then you can use filters, air conditioners, and whatever technology you want to be able to create comfortable environments inside in china also known for its bad air quality several private schools have built such domes around play areas and gyms so that the kids can enjoy running around no matter what the air outside is like these school domes are small yet they are not cheap the rd project for example cost around 30 lakhs jay says and as private schools they can afford to do it but the bigger the dome you want to build the costlier it will get firstly you need to create a structure right you need to actually create the physical dome 
And then if you want to allow sunlight, natural light in, then you need thermal comfort as well because then you're creating a greenhouse. Uh, so then you start looking into thermal comfort, and, you know, then you need cooling coils in your fresh air unit or filtered fresh air unit. So, you know, your energy footprint is just going higher and higher, right? It's like, where do you draw the line? So, yeah, I mean, does the technology exist to do it? Yeah, absolutely. Technology exists. But would we want bigger domes? Would we want to add to other problems like climate change? For a moment though, let's forget about these costs. And let's talk a bit about where we would place these domes if we could. After this break. Welcome back. If we take Delhi as an example, where can we build clean air domes? And how big can we make them? Domes, you know, may work at the very micro scale, whether you're talking about just your own personal space inside the home or office. So it can work even at an architectural scale, which is, you know, a collection of buildings, maybe. That's Dr. Rohit again. But as soon as you jump up, or you scale up a little bit at the neighborhood district level, even uh, you realize that this is not workable. We talked about it a little while ago. The bigger you want to build a dome, the costlier it will get in terms of A, money, and B, energy. But it's not just the cost. You'll also have to think about the sources of pollution inside. The cars, the factories, homes, construction, fires in landfills, and so on. Dome-like structure which encloses anything larger than a particular building obviously cannot have more sources of pollution entering from within. So, if you want a clean air dome, you'll have to figure out all the sources of pollution inside and how much they contribute to the pollution. Typically, when we think about air pollution, we look at these bigger sources, so power plants and industries and traffic. In some cases, equally big sources are, you know, things like very small-scale waste-related activities. At least for the last few years, agricultural burning has been a big issue because it tends to impact air quality over very large areas. That's Dr. Pallavi Pant. She's an air quality scientist who grew up in Delhi and now works in Boston, USA. And then there are also certain sources that are really inside our homes that we don't, you know, really acknowledge as much or don't realize as much. So things like burning incense, but also cooking. Even in homes that are, you know, in cities, usually you would be cooking with LPG or with electricity. Just the fact that we're cooking and the fact that, you know, a lot of Indian cooking tends to involve hot oil and frying can really release a lot of particles. And that is all the air that we are breathing in and out constantly. So that affects us. So one way to get your dome and live in it would be to find ways to manage the pollution sources. For example, you could allow only electric vehicles inside, so no exhaust smoke. You could ban all burning of garbage inside. You may also pass a rule against cooking things in oil. Or you could go about it another way. You could install a gazillion air purifiers, not just outside on the dome, but also inside. But that would mean that only people who have good money can afford clean air. Clean air then becomes private. Yeah, that's a pretty horrific thought, to be honest, because... um... I do not want to think about that future at all. You know, I mean, if we just think about the basics here, clean air is a right. Uh, I think we all have, even in our constitution, the right to clean air and like a clean environment. So to think about the future where it might just be paper minute kind of access to clean air is not a, you know, scenario I want to paint in my head. But just like RO for clean water, private clean air inside domes can be a future that becomes possible for the rich. We've seen it uh, with these really small-scale initiatives of, oh, you can buy oxygen cans, which are from, you know, fresh Himalayan air or Swiss air or, I don't know, like all kinds of exotic airs that you can get. Um, Or people really advertising their venues as being clean. They put out the air quality values that their establishment has. And then that adds a premium to what is going on. And hotels are adding those as well. But I do hope we don't get to the place where clean air is not a right anymore and you have to pay to access that. So my 
question therefore would not so much be whether it is or not possible at a certain scale the question would be what is our objective here what kinds of uh, uh, goals do we have with this technology if clean air for all is our objective and the government was paying for it just like they pay for these smog towers then we would still have to prioritize where we would build the clean air domes so again coming back to the issue of scale in the pollution debate we have tended to move to larger scale that is you know it's not a delhi issue it's actually a regional issue and it's not even a regional issue it's a transnational issue so we tend to go uh, further and further out but i think we can learn a little bit from the uh, old debate on environmental justice which considers the differential impacts of environmental change on different populations which is that the impacts of environmental changes like air pollution are neither random nor equal people who are more marginalized like those who live in slums or low income areas or people who are sick like those in hospitals are more likely to suffer from the effects of pollution than those who live in wealthier neighborhoods because rich folks can already afford air purifiers air conditioners and even get out of the city when things get bad For instance there is a landfill in southern part of Delhi in a neighborhood called Okla there is a massive ESI hospital right next to it that landfill often uh, has these low intensity fires and the smoke emanating from it uh, all the time there are people living around it so they have constant exposure to it but also people who are in the hospital including doctors and medical staff who have to breathe in this this air and so if you look at even that scale this kind of 500 meter to a kilometer buffer around this space it is far worse off than other places in the city and it's no accident that this place also has urban villages unauthorized colonies slum clusters also minority population and so it's not random it's not accidental that they have the worst of it and if there are to be certain sorts of micro scale technical interventions then perhaps we should focus our attention on these kind of spaces rather than even saying all schools everywhere and so on unfortunately we don't really take these things into consideration take the smog towers for example dr rohit says these were neither installed where the most vulnerable live nor were they based on the geography of pollution also they don't work but let's assume that the government does use expert advice in the future and decides to build smaller domes covering areas that face the brunt of air pollution even then there would be a thousand other things to think about like how do people enter and exit the dome are animals and birds allowed to move in and out freely can you do construction and build roads inside will the dome be transparent to let sunlight in will it withstand strong winds what happens when it rains and the rain deposits all the pollutants in the air outside on the surface of the dome who cleans the dome if you decide to wash the dome what happens to the water with all those pollutants now how do you keep the structure safe imagine the dome collapsing on thousands of people or imagine there's a fire with all the residents trapped inside If you have other thoughts on the various problems we might run into, do write to us. Of course, in this future, just because we have clean air inside a dome doesn't mean there's no air pollution at all. It's still lingering, waiting for us to just take one tiny step outside. So it can give us a giant hug. So Is even considering a domed life a defeatist idea where we don't want to do the actual work and stop the pollution in the first place? So I don't think it's one or the other because you know two different scientists that we've spoken to one quite recently have said that even if we implement with the right political will the most important technical fixes that are given for Delhi's air pollution it is going to take 20 30 40 years to make a significant impact. because it's not linear the impact is not linear you may reduce a lot of sources but uh, the response is not immediately uh, it doesn't follow proportionately it takes longer and so given that situation uh, i don't think it's defeatist uh, but carefully targeted technical solutions can actually help if you're talking about a vulnerable populations whether in terms of their health whether in terms of their location 
and b if we are talking about public kind of interventions where there is some debate there is some thinking and it's not just driven by who is paying more so if those two considerations are taken then given the fact that even with the best intentions and right actions this is not going to go away fast we shouldn't uh, i believe reject proposals outright but like we've seen with so many other things like gated colonies shopping malls and aro systems clean air domes if domes did become a thing will probably be first available to the rich and dr pallavi isn't a fan of this future at all we cannot in that context of you know our cities and and you know our country think about solutions that are going to be prohibitively expensive for almost everybody and will probably end up creating situations where the current inequities just get exacerbated even more Let's hypothetically say that some people can afford to build a dome around their building. That might lead to some very conflicted relationships with the world outside, with the people who don't get to live inside the dome. We're seeing some of it already, um, you know, not in the context of domes, but you know, one example from Delhi that over the last few years people have started addressing in in a big way is we have colonies where there are big bungalows and there's a small like cabin outside for the security guard and during winter the security guard has you know these are not weatherproof cabins so they have to resort to whatever means in order to stay warm overnight and that often means just burning you know wood or burning waste or burning something that will give them warmth and for a lot of people who started complaining about air pollution it was the thing of you know oh these everyone else is burning all this fuel and they're creating air pollution and then some people suddenly realized well hold on a minute it's also people that we employ and it's because they don't have access so they started uh, distributing electric heaters and they started distributing you know blankets and making sure that people have what they need to stay warm so they don't have to do something else so we are just going to create probably a situation where it becomes easy to blame the other and say you're the problem not me and i can also isolate myself here and just you know um live in a cleaner environment that's better for my health and that just adds to all of the tensions that are around us air it's that one thing that connects us all on this planet It's also what makes other planets inhospitable. So, can we really afford to deal with this air pollution problem by isolating ourselves in smaller chambers where some of us get to breathe air that's cleaner? I personally have very conflicted feelings about it because of the whole inequality issue, but also is it just going to distract us? Will it become, you know, the next big thing that people latch onto because it seems doable and it seems real and you know some will definitely have the means to afford it but will the rich really like this idea so my conversations with a lot of people who are using at a smaller scale with you know purifiers on a regular basis it's not something that they look forward to so it's not something that they go you know oh great i'm going to return home and return my purifier what a wonderful evening i'm going to spend with that it's seen as a temporary fix it's seen as something you just absolutely need because of the situation you first have to think about keeping yourself and your family healthy even those who use these technologies they do realize and talk about the fact that in a longer term it's not the solution it's just a temporary arrangement especially when you face with the uh, health emergencies what about you what would you do in this hypothetical future where air in your city just kept getting worse and you couldn't move out would you try and find a place inside a clean air dome or would you reject the idea even if you could afford it let me know Imagine Tomorrow is created and hosted by me Shreya Das Gupta. 
Abhijit Chailanath is the mind behind the theme music, sound design, mixing and editing. Thanks to all the experts who spoke to me for this episode. Dr. Pallavi Pant, Dr. Rohit Negi, Mr. Jaydhar Gupta and Mr. Rajat Sodhi. Thanks to Shivalika and Abhijit for voicing the characters of the fictional news piece and to Porni Ray for writing it. We had research and production help from Porni, Parvati Nair and Nihira Ram. Thanks to Abhishek Madan for listening to Multiple Drafts. Do tell us what you thought of the episode. My Twitter handle is at shreyadasgupta and our email is imagined.tomorrow at gmail.com. Other contact details are in the show notes. That's it for today. See you soon.